Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of Europeans at Heart, a podcast created and hosted by the Young European Ambassadors in the European Union and the United Kingdom. Today, as part of our new series, Voices of War, we're joined by Anna, a fellow Young European Ambassador from Ukraine who stayed in her country and whose work in the field of information is crucial to the society she lives in, as we will see later on. I'm Jules, a young European ambassador from France, and I'll be conducting this interview alongside Mathilde. Hi, everyone. I'm Mathilde. I'm a young European ambassador from Italy, and I'm very happy to have Anna with us today. So, um, yeah, that's me, that's us, and we hope it's going to be a good interview. Our first question is very simple, but yet very important. Um, how are you doing today? Yes, thanks, you. It's really nice to meet you, both of you. Uh, actually, right now I'm quite all right because I'm in the safe place in Western Ukraine. However, still, when you understand all the things that are happening around the world, especially in Ukraine, in the Eastern Ukraine, you really feel terrible because you understand that people are dying and that it won't stop in days, weeks, nobody knows when it is going to stop. So, for me personally, on the one side, I'm grateful to be safe and I'm thankful to all Ukrainian partners that they help us. But on the other side, I'm, I'm really afraid of my relatives and friends who live in the Eastern Ukraine, in Kyiv or other cities uh, where are the most uh, horrible battles taking place. So uh, it, I have mixed feelings, I think. On to the second question, which is also very important. Um, can you shortly present yourself to us? What you did in life before, uh, who are you, um, etc. What you would like us to know about yourself? I'm Anna Fasilir. I'm a young European ambassador in Ukraine. And currently, I'm a student of international communications and youth journalist. Uh, because of the situation, my main occupation is covering war right now and writing analytical materials about it. So... As, my, as many as possible people can know the truth and everything that is happening here in Ukraine. Could you tell us more about your city, where you live, and if your city is known for something in particular? Uh, actually, for the last years, I've lived in Kyiv. It is the capital of Ukraine. However, on the 21st of February, when everything happened and when there were missile strikes on Kyiv airport and on other cities, uh, I was forced to move into a safer place. Actually, it is my mother town in the, west, in the western Ukraine. And uh, here is something like a place for volunteers. We cooperate, we work to help people who are there in Ukraine. And we uh, accept refugees here who, who move, also move from that cities, which are really dangerous right now. Because when you stay there, you really jeopardize your whole survival. The Russians are bombarding cities, they are bombarding civic infrastructure and everything. So people like me, as the journal, media journalist, they move to the West to work safely and to have an opportunity to write about everything that is happening. Was it hard for you to move from your, from your city? Yes, actually it was painful because the, my whole life was there. So in that day, when you understand that you need just to take this single suitcase and put the whole your life in it, I also have a cat. So you can just imagine how it was that road of complete two days road when I needed to only with one suitcase with all of my stuff there and my cat was screaming every time uh, just to move to safer place. So it was really difficult. and. Uh, I felt, I don't know how, how even to describe what I felt today. I think that I was empty, completely empty, because I couldn't believe that it is possible this the 21st century. So, yep. Do you remember what you were doing the first moment you heard about the starting of the war? Uh, actually, I was sleeping. Uh, the, the day when it all started, it was 21st of February. And at 5 a.m., my mother called me that Kiev is bombarded. And I was like, what? I didn't even believe that. Because how could I imagine the scenario in which my country, my city, can be bombarded by someone, some, by someone else? Uh, Russia is quite um, an aggressive country. So I think that I could have expected that. However, I 
really believe that there is something human in them in themselves so it would be possible just to make some negotiations to end all of those all of those stuff uh, with diplomatic tools because i am an international communicator and i was taught that everything needs to be uh, done through diplomatic path however it's not the case for russia and, yeah could you tell us more about this fatidic uh, 24th of February, you've told us that you've heard about the war while you were sleeping, thanks to your mom. But how did the day unfold after this uh, tragic news? Uh, we were, I don't know, we didn't even know what to do because uh, the war does start every day. And uh, although we are used to that crazy neighbor, our east neighbor, that someday it could invade our territory and take them to the, their territories. So we're quite we're quite used to that. However, still uh, that they are the situation when they are bombarding different cities at the same time at night, it was completely unacceptable and impossible for us. So uh, my parents my parents was really shocked because they uh, they're living here in Western Ukraine and I was living in Kiev for themselves for themselves it was horrible to hear that because they know that I'm not safe and they know that I'm the only one there. So I don't have relatives in Kyiv. I have relatives in other cities. And they understood that what are we going to do? Because um, I need to evacuate myself, either uh, go somewhere in a safer place with people. So I needed to evacuate with people I hardly know. Uh, it was also quite difficult because I couldn't find people to go, who to go with, and many people escaped Kiev that day. So there were a lot of cars, a really hard traffic. Kiev. We needed to stay, I think, ten hours on one street because many people wanted to evacuate, and it was completely impossible to to get home as soon as possible because it all the whole road from Kiev to my mother town was taken. 35 hours and i think that it's the most horrific story of my life and i'm not sure you told us which city did you move to and um why did you move there did you have uh, any relative there or um, was it because it was the simplest city to go to the safest city to go to you know i'm not really sure that i can say that there is a safe city in ukraine because uh, uh, there are a lot, a lot of, I don't know how to say it even. Uh, the Russian strategy is to take to fear is to make us fear themselves. Uh, so they are trying to bomb completely every city, and a few times a day we have a siren uh, because of the air danger. So um, I believe that it's not a safe place for. 100 percent but still uh it's near the romanian border so it's quite uh, it's quite safety to live in the western ukraine right now i moved here because it's my mother now it's sure to see where my parents live so right now i'm living with parents volunteering helping people who move from there who do not have relatives or friends here to get used to their new life here we know you are uh, working frontline for information and reporting the right, the right informations about what's going on. But do you also personally know know someone that is actually fighting at the front? And if yes, are you able to contact them? Uh, yes. Actually, before becoming a young European ambassador, I was uh, in one party, youth party, and uh, I. Um, have a lot of acquaintances there and people, uh, boys from the party, they are now uh, fighting Kyiv. It is really hard to understand that they are that they are 19 year, year old, 20 years old or 21 years old because the whole life they have ahead. And now they are standing there under Russian fire, not knowing whether they will be ever alive. And for me, it's impossible to speak about this because I know these people I've, uh, 
I've spent so much time with them. And today when we are chatting and I'm asking the single question, are you safe? Are you, are you alive? Is everything okay? It just breaks my heart because uh, they are my close friends and I'm really afraid whether they will be alive and everything will be okay. I guess it's really hard right now to think about the future, seeing that the present is being so dramatic, but is there, do you have any perspective or ideas or thoughts about possible future developments, the development of this conflict? Uh, it's a tough question because uh, the thing is that uh, nobody knows for sure when we can end everything that is going right now because Russia has a lot of troops, they have a lot of uh, tanks, a lot of uh, weaponry, and because of that, they can fight for a long, long time. And the worst thing is that people there, uh, they are being affected by the propaganda. And they do believe that this war is, um, is, pro is provoked. So they do believe that this war is the right thing to do. According to the last, uh, uh, I think, the last toll in Russia, where they were asking people whether they support this war or not, 71% of people supported this war. And this is the key thing. If people in Russia support this invasion, how can we say about the ending of this war? And although the sanctions are working and although they are, they are spreading rapidly, the majority of Russians, they still believe that we need to continue this war. And because of that, I think that it can take months I hope that it will end as soon as possible, but it's really difficult to give any forecast, uh, understanding that it is highly supported by their people and furthermore by some country in Europe also. We've also seen that the resistance uh, has been heroic in Ukraine right now. Also, thank, thanks to uh, the people you've just talked about uh, in Kiev. Could you comment on this resistance going on? And from the outside, it seems that it could continue forever, that the Ukrainian people are just not going to let uh, the Russian invaders stay in their country. Yes, actually, it's the most exciting thing of this whole war, because I was deeply amazed how people dare to act when a lot of soldiers with armory uh, are invading their cities and people without anything, just their hands barefoot are going just to stand for their uh, right stand for their country it's really amazing because women men everyone everyone wants to do something to stop it and it it is what makes me feel proud to be ukrainian and i am sure right now to know that ukraine is a place for free people for people that believe in their future and for people that are ready to fight for the future that's the main thing and uh, you know um, a friend of mine uh who is now who's now in Kiev, he said one statement that i still remember that it is better to die right now than to live under russian rulers so i deeply believe that ukrainians are a part of the european community and we will stand about to this to this ideal to become a, tr a rightful and truthful part of the community and uh, I think that we will never give up to any any to any anybody and to anything you've talked about truth freedom uh, liberty these are but also are words that could also be used to describe an important work which is going on uh, right now in Ukraine and which I think you're also a part of which is information and participating to uh, the spreading of correct information um, maybe can could you tell us a bit more about this um, work that you're doing right now mm, yes sure actually it's another uh, frontier i think because uh, there is a huge media work going on and the russian propaganda tries to work outside in ukraine in european union in usa they are trying to invent a new truth, the truth that says that they are right to invade a country, another country, and its sovereign territory, just to 
create their, I don't know, create their um, underruled uh, countries. So um, to my mind, uh, the media, the media plays a major role here because uh, it influences people's mind. And uh, as long as you read newspapers, watch TV shows, you are affected by that. And you make your own statement, your own thought on the issue. And uh, if we can fight Russian propaganda, people will be able to know the truth. They will be able to create truthful statement. But, and they will not be affected by, by those, uh, like how they call a special op military operation, something like that. It's not a military operation. And it, they are not saving people. How could they save? How could, how could they be saving people by firing maternity hospital, by firing children, and by firing women and men? That's that's nonsense. And the most horrific thing here is that there are people who believe this propaganda. And right now, as I'm a journalist, I write a lot of materials in English and in Ukrainian to change this narratives to show people that they are showing false information and it's complete misinformation and it's not just misinformation about some about someone or about something it's inter, it's an inform, a misinformation about war and war is a horrible thing and i do not wish anyone to feel what every ukrainian feels now so for me as a woman as a journalist the only thing to do is to write to try to try to be heard by different people from, from the world. And on a more like practical level in your work in this battle against misinformation, how exactly do you contradict this disinformation with what kind of material? Uh, government information or do you have any like specific sources uh, other than this government information? Uh, actually, I try to use different sources. First of all, it's government of information because I do not like lies or propaganda. So I really try to uh, make contacts with officials and to say something that officials do say. However, still, I have a lot of people on the ground who are seeing this, who are filming everything that is happening. And these people also help me to show gruesome detail everything that is happening in ukraine but for the most part of course it's official person official people he has a question about this propaganda that i mean you've been talking about but also we hear about this a lot in the in the news and i was wondering was this propaganda also trying to influence information in ukraine before the war or is this something that started just because of the war, like, did you have already a sign of influence and trying to, yeah, get into your information and your news? Uh, I know this is something that is going on for years in Ukraine. In 2013, when everything started from the Donbass and the Crimea, uh, the Russians had a particular mission for, of propaganda in those uh, areas. They spread false information about Ukraine. They spread information about how Russia integrated, how people, when they will uh, be a part of Russia, will uh, benefit from it. And because of that, this stable work for many years, people, people started to think different. So it is just, um, conclusion and uh, of, of all this informational war it is not its beginning it's its ending i i believe because it all started uh, 10 years ago or even since the ussr has ex has um, exploded so i believe that it is just the the ending of it and today's war is the consequence of that propaganda so it's something that comes from from afar as i can understand from what you said absolutely now since we're Young European ambassador from the EU, I would like to ask you a question about the role that EU has been playing as a political entity, and what your what are your thoughts on the on the role we we played, and if you think we something more could have been done, or if we are doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, uh, we are really thankful for your help 
because I believe that through these horrible days, the support is extremely visible. I have friends who lost their home and they are now able to live in Poland, in Germany, in many other countries of European of the European Union. And it makes me proud, I think, not even proud, extremely grateful and thankful for for that it's completely um, people from different countries. They are trying to help Ukrainian refugees. They are sending humanitarian aid to us. So I'm I'm and every Ukrainian are extremely thankful for that. Because uh, if we uh, hadn't hadn't got so many uh, thanks, if we hadn't hadn't got this support, I think that we would have fallen really really fast. So, however, still, I'm not a minister or I'm not a politician, but and I'm not a warrior. But I think that there is still some things that can be done to help us, especially, uh, especially in arms because we do not have enough armory to fight back. And uh, at this point, it is not a question of our ingratitude, it is a question of the objectivity to the response to the threat. Um, because we do not have uh, enough weaponry to, or air defense to protect infrastructure, to protect uh, people from missile strike. So I believe that the thing that we can, that Europe and USA can do to us just to, to share more weaponry. And another probably thing that I wanted to mention is that there are still some countries who continue supporting this war. And in particular, for example, it's Hungary. It continues its strange policy. This country blocks arms by Ukraine, uh, as well as sponsors the aggressor. But the thing we need to understand is that throughout its history, Russia has been the initiator of wars. And let's just not forget that Hitler started the World War II in a coalition with Stalin. And today, Russia, is, I think that today, Russia is a new kind of method. They they brutally kill children, as I said, women, and they destroy homes and infrastructure. And I believe that we need to react harder. So we've already talked about your feeling that Ukrainian battle, which is being fought right now, was both a battle for freedom and for European values. We've also seen huge demonstration taking place in uh, every European capital. Just what does it mean to you, both in terms of support and in terms of this European feeling you've been talking about? It's, it's great. I feel the integrity between our people. And the integrity and support is the main issue here. Because we have this support and we know that they are waiting up for us. And they understand the sacrifice Ukraine gives to be part of the world. And I am deeply thankful for everything. When I'm watching all of those demonstrations, I'm amazed. I'm really amazed because I understand that Russian propaganda, which was there, it doesn't work. And people do understand and do know what's happening right now. And they do understand the, the terrific situations that are going in many cities of Ukraine. And that the Support is is really incredible thing because we understand that we need to fight till the very end and we will be supported even when everything will be destroyed. Follow up question about um, this answer. So it's nice to hear that this support has been very useful in Ukraine, but unfortunately, as the war is continuing, the support is kind of fading away and people are turning themselves to other uh, themes in the news. How could we continue to mobilize people in Europe about what's happening in Ukraine, which hasn't stopped and which is getting even more horrible as this continue? Thanks for the question. It is a really valuable question because even here in Ukraine, I feel how we are getting used to it. It's horrible. I understand. However, that's how humans do work. We are getting used to any circumstances. And that's horrible because we can't forget that there are people fighting, there are people being killed, there are people uh, being uh, wounded, and we need to remember this. And I think that the, it, it all can be done by a really simple thing, like speaking out loud. Just, uh, we need to speak 
we do not need to stop uh, thinking about the world. I know that lives go on, but still, for some people, it's not. And we need to understand that uh, we need to help those people. And the war won't stop today, tomorrow, the next week. And we need just to speak out loud, to share the information about war, for people not to forget about that. We need to get up early in the morning and view all of those horrible news and share and share and display them to the people from in other countries. Because when someone can sleep peacefully, Ukrainians cannot. Because we do not even know whether the Western cities are safe. But through this week, quite a lot of nights were quite disturbing because we had uh, alarm. So we needed to get up to get in the safe place because there was a risk of being bombarded. So, and it's our reality. And I think that the main thing for Europeans and for Ukrainians is, uh, despite getting used to the war, still continue talking, still continue speaking, and uh, trying to engage as many people as possible. That's the only instrument I see. So, since we are, we all, the three of us, we're all in the same network, the network of the young European ambassadors. I wanted to know from you if you felt like this network helped you to maybe feel a little less abandoned and maybe still part of something and if the network supported you in some way and if, if it did, how? Yes, uh, Young European Ambassadors is a place that helps Ukrainian youth to get used to the situation. Our coordinator and people from other countries, they highly support us. They're giving some uh, places to leave for people who left eastern cities of Ukraine and that what makes me feel proud to be a part of this initiative because it's not only about talking about democracy talking about European values it's also about real help I have friends who are now in different EU cities because of young European ambassadors and that is what what is amazing because even even though we are too young to create some policies or to create some negotiations. We are mature enough to help each other. So I think that it's another value of our initiative that we can, through difficult times, help each other, support each other, not only through words, through different conferences, but also through real and simple things like helping with um, helping with the accommodation or helping with the transferring into another city. So yeah, the initiative does a lot of things. I am really happy to hear about this and I agree with you that network and the initiative is it, it's real. It's not just about talking and good talking and good discussion. So thank you for that. So you told us about the start from the beginning, you told us that you moved from your city, but have you ever thought about Leave in the country at some point? Actually, I think that it's quite unacceptable for me because I love my country too much to move from it. I wish one day after everything ends, I, it will be possible for me just to see all of you, to travel around Europe, see my friends, friends from initiative also, and to celebrate the victory of democracy, the victory of our country, and I think the victory of the whole Europe, because we are now defending Europe, it's truthful. So I believe that I will stay here, that this Western city is the last point of my um, travel, it's not travel, <laughs> it's like evacuation. So I believe that I will stay here even when everything happens. That's very brave, and I, I understand what you, what you mean by that. So is there any topic we didn't touch upon until now in the interview, which you would like to speak about in this last part of it? Actually, I think that it's worth saying that the war is an opportunity for us and for Europe to understand some crucial things. First of all, that for our freedom and for the democracy, we need to fight. And there will be no without having a good weaponry and a good defense. And another thing is that understanding um, that Russia has never been 
is not and cannot be a reliable partner. I believe that we need to build a system, especially economic and energy system, in which Russia will not play such a significant role. Um, a country that brutally violates any laws, international law, cannot be a part of civilized world. And we must understand that. Because I don't remember who exactly said it, but I believe that it was um, Turkish uh, minister who said that this war began because in 2014, when the Russia annexed Crimea, the world didn't um, give a strict answer to that. They just closed eyes. However, it was a horrible violation of international law. A sovereign country, Ukraine, was invaded by Russia back then. So I need that this war is an opportunity for everyone to understand the hazard that is going from Russia as a nuclear country. So I believe that we need to keep that in mind every time. Yeah, this is actually a, a good remark and it's good to also learn from the past and looking back and see what happened also in the past and to better understand the, the present and maybe try to do better in the future. In the future. And um, so first of all, I would like to say thank you for all your answers. You're really, uh, uh, I can tell by your answers that you're really brilliant and brave young woman. So I, many thanks. And I would like to ask you if you have any last um, message to deliver to anyone in particular or just a general statement. I think that the only message I want to the whole world to understand that uh, we have taken one another and that what binds us together is greater than what drives us apart. So we need to help each other. We need to stop being indifferent. And we just need to share that European values between ourselves and believe in freedom and democracy. Well, thank you so, so much for uh, giving us some of your time and giving us these answers that were very in interesting and insightful about your situation right now in Ukraine. And it was really a pleasure to talk to you tonight. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure for me too. I'm really happy to meet all of you. So it's a new acquaintance. I'm happy that such great people are part of the issue. I am also part of it. So yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I hope you'll have a chance to meet. Yeah. <laughs> it was exactly the thing I was thinking. We hope to see you soon and thanks again, Anna, for these amazing words and thoughts you share with us. Bye bye. Have a good evening. Bye. 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 bye.